song what's up sean happy what if wednesday welcome to the inner circle preview show what's cracking <laughs> i love that song too it is the end of the year it is a magical time it is a wondrous time it's a time for some people to stuff themselves full of food and wonder and not get much done not for us my friend this is a time to plan, to strategize, to lay the foundation for what is to come. I love it. Yes, I'm excited. The title of the episode is what you need to change in your business starting January 1st. But I had this idea. Let's change nothing. Let's right. get the same results as this year. Let's not grow our businesses and we'll just we'll just be fat and happy. How's that sound? Well, the the good part of that is we already know how to do it. That's good. Comfort yeah. is the key to growing your well business. Well-worn tracks. Mm -hmm. Comfort and right, we don't have to we don't have to push ourselves to do anything more than we're doing right now. Is that the room that we're in? That's this group. Am I that, in a right just thinking about it? I hate that plan. Please don't do that. If you're watching this and you want to grow your business, guess what? You got to change. Doing what got you here won't get you there. And we're going to talk about that. We got a couple weeks left to the end of the year and we're in full planning mode. We're in full planning mode in the inner circle. We got things moving. People are grooving. I'm jacked up and we're ready to go for 2024. This is, this is probably the best I've personally felt in business going into a new year in, in literally the past decade, just because of the new way we're planning and scheduling out the year. So I was say, I'm talk about that one. That's a big statement. This is the most clear Clear? Am I putting words in your mouth? I love doing that. You know what? I already okay. forget, but let's go with clear. This is the most inspirational leader you've ever worked with. Did I just... <laughs> I'm kidding. I that think that's guy. exactly what I said. in rooms like that. With that. Are you saying... Can I restate this for you? I didn't <laughs> say any of that. I, in fact, I haven't started speaking yet. Uh, let's cut to the chase. What you're about to say is... No, but that's a big statement. So expand on that. Why do you... Why do you why specifically do you think that it's a big that? statement but it's it's true when you compare side by side so i'm i'm thinking about in the past what i'd always done for i guess strategic planning right if we're going to use the normal terms and it was it was putting goals on a piece of paper as a matter of fact i used a google doc i can show you all of them for the last 10 years i still have them oh. and it was just one sentence of a goal they had metrics they were trackable i did all the right things they were smart goals right but there was no plan on how to get there and i think that's that's been the missing piece for me and i know for a lot of people that we've talked to is like you put these list of goals on a sheet and you just hope and hope is not a good business strategy versus actually breaking it down like we're doing now i don't know if we're going to get into it on this show but hey that's why you should join us in the inner circle. So more on that later. But um, Sean, what do you have to say about that? Because you've done this for the biggest of companies in the world and the smallest of companies and you yes. get results. So what we're doing. So I love the strategic planning portion of it because of the harmonious business architecture, because it is the it is a microcosm of everything we do to take traditional things that still have some power in them because they were hunting in the right forest, but not in the right grove. Did I just come up with a new, a new little term, right? So they're, they were hunting in the right forest, not in the right grove. So they were, we know they're directionally right. So we're taking these things that big businesses have trusted forever and distilling it down to the essence because we're trying to leverage the 20% of the activities that are going to give us 80% of the lift. And that's what we do at every stage, even though every iteration we go through this cycle with our clients and they get incrementally better at each of the 10 disciplines because we they're ready to handle more layers of nuance and activities. They sharpen the pencils. They get better and better and better. But right now, if we went all in on level 10s across the board kind of architecture, they would not do it. And if they're not going to do it, you know, I'd rather a bad weight loss plan for somebody than nothing, than the greatest one ever that they're never going to do. That's like people, they, they, that's why 
even though people get super psyched about their why and their motivation and they're going to lose weight this year. It's a, it, we use this as an example now because this is the perfect time because people are thinking about New Year's resolutions and that kind of stuff. This is the year I do it. And then they come up with an unsustainable or unachievable level of commitment and sacrifice and restrictive diet. And the whole thing falls apart inside of three months because it just was never designed for, for where they are. There were no incremental gains built in there. And so the benefit of us using of us using the bad first is so we know exactly where businesses are. Every client that we have, we know exactly where they are in their understanding and application of their capacity to take in more information on these 10 disciplines and execute on them so their business accelerates on its path towards the vision that we set with them. That that kind of clarity alone moves the dial and lets them see, yeah, there's stuff that you've heard of that you just haven't been leveraging it right. We're going to get rid of 80% of the crap that you do not need right now. These 20% leverageable gains in knowledge and execution and activities that we are telling you, it's not just teaching you the why, we're telling you how, we're doing it with you. The level of acceleration you get from that and understanding is insane. And we can then just come back around every time we do strategic planning with these clients, they're going to get more and more sophisticated. And then we can throw in def different levels and layers of now are we ready for this other fine tuning? Are we ready for these other tools? Are we ready to do a little more of the kind of strategic planning that we need to look a little further out, look at, look across industries, look at your competitors now, because you're not in your little small geography anymore. We've expanded you. You're now multi-facility operation you have all kinds of new dynamics and new layers what we're teaching people one person or a person with three employees about people management and about inspiration and all the things that go around that it's not the same thing that we're teaching somebody with 500 people in more than one location because the layers of complexity we distill the dis discipline down so Company A is doing the exact same things as company B. They understand it in all the ways. But the le levels of sophistication and the other tools we add in are different than from where they are. Yeah. So let me pause there because there's a couple of things I want to touch on. A, if this is the first time you're seeing us, welcome in. Love to have you here. Sean mentioned the bad. This is our eight-minute assessment. It will give you crystal clarity into your business and show you exactly in these 10 disciplines that we're talking about in the harmonious architecture, where you're strong, where you're weak, and it'll tell us how we can leverage the links between the disciplines to get you the biggest lift to, to utilize the 80-20 rule and figure out what is that 20% that can have the biggest lift, especially in the first quarter, the first 12 weeks of the year. So I'll say that. And then the other thing that you touched on, which is very important, and again, I've fallen victim to this in the past, I'm sure a lot of people have, you said, we look at our competitors to set our goals and our outcomes. And I think a lot of people, they want to look external because they don't want to acknowledge the, the internal chaos, if you will, that's going on. Um, so we look at that at the outside. We say, what is everybody else doing? What are the gurus on the internet saying? What is, what is the new tactic and the new uh, software tool that everyone's using to grow their business? And we just go and we bounce from idea to idea and back and forth. And we never actually sustain results and growth. So talk about the difference between those two for a minute, because I think. So, yeah. That's so key. looking externally, looking externally has value if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for an idea of what is possible, where you could go. Um, but what it doesn't address and the reason why that fails, if that's if that's your bar, ooh, look at what they're doing. I want to do those same things. You can see the trajectory they took. Okay, but it was a different time, a different place. They're a different person showing up in, with a different mindset. And you are chasing. You think you know the dynamics. You think the world's going to work exactly the same way. And it's not. It absolutely is not. Two, it, which we know because two people following the same recipe are going to get a slightly different result. It's not chemistry. It's cooking. And so it's might be directionally accurate for where you want to go and inspirational, but it doesn't meet you where you are. It doesn't say here you are. And then here is the chartable path. Now I know the Delta. 
I can do these things and get within range of being able to do what that person or that other company is doing. And just because they're doing it doesn't mean that I want to. If that's why I'm looking at them, I want what they have and the path is laid out for me. If that's all it were, then anybody who wanted to, to be, you know, to run Berkshire Hathaway would just build another Berkshire Hathaway because it's all right there, right? Isn't it history? Just do the same thing. That's not even, we, we hear how stupid that sounds when it's said that way. And yet you could find that advice of they've shown you the way, so just do what they're doing. Well, they've shown me what could be. And then my path from here to there should be leveraged for maximum acceleration with minimum input from to close the gap from where I are. This I am the skill sets that I need, my team needs, my company needs, and and assets we need to build that. Then in the most expeditious fashion, that will get you there because you have to chart your own course. We know that, so why isn't that the business advice we're getting in a practical way? Oh, we're getting it now. Yeah, well, talking about <laughs> tactics and, and different tools is sexy and fun, and that's what people want to listen to, and they want to try it. Nobody wants to talk about an overall strategy because, uh, quite honestly, it it's boring in the traditional sense. And we put those terms on the screen. That's why we renamed them, and we call it Harmonious, and we've made it fun. Business should be fun. But let's So let's back up for a minute. There was something I said that I just want to highlight because it's what our clients typically come to us seeking a result for, and that is chaos. So I'm going to put this on the screen. We have a three-day workshop coming up. It is the Chaos to Calm Accelerator um, in just a couple of days at this point. So go over there and register for it. This is your last chance to get that foundation in your business solid before 2024, because the next thing we're going to talk about right now is the thing you need to change in your business. And that's the way you plan your year and the way you go about tackling those goals and objectives. So we're going to touch on that a little bit, and then we're going to go super deep in the inner circle, of course, but don't, don't go into the year with a new plan without a foundation. That is a disaster waiting to happen. So if you're tired of the firefighting, if you're tired of the chaos, and here's one that's happened to me, this happened three times yesterday. And this is why I know this is a very prevalent problem in, in business culture today. So as you know, I host the Harmonious at Lunch podcast. It's where we bring biz other business owners on and we just have a, a short, short 15, 20 minute conversation, right? Yesterday, I had three people cancel on me, said, oh, something came up. I had to take care of it. You are running a business full of chaos, people. If you can't dedicate 20 minutes to get the word out about your business on the internet, your business is in chaos. I promise you there was nothing that urgent that came up. You just thought it was because you didn't have the foundation solid in your business. So shout out to everyone who canceled on me yesterday. I'm looking forward to our conversations in a couple of days, but you should register for this accelerator because you're going to need it. So the enough of me throwing shade at It's the urgent masquerading as the important. And so many people get in, involved in that because they have no litmus test for understanding whether really, it's really important or not. There, of course, there are day-to-day -day things that happen and there are tactical things that require your attention. And they're going to, the person outside your door is going to be the one screaming the loudest. But the most voices, the most volume is people screaming for what you have because you're solving something for them, correct? Mm -hmm. We've built our business in the right way so that the product or service that we're providing is solving an important business need. Those voices are louder than anybody knocking on your door. And if you, this person, any of these people who canceled, they were not looking at their ubiquity score, their marketing score. They were not thinking about that. It was not top of mind. This other thing took precedent. Now, maybe what came up was the fire alarm was going off. There, that, that's an excuse, okay? We all work from home. I'm not buying that excuse anymore. <laughs> we just handed a subpoena. I don't know what, there are times where things could happen. Yes, there was family emergencies. These things do happen. But I bet this wasn't that. I bet this was, it crept up on them. They were doing other work. It was more comfortable to go and talk to somebody out there about some ongoing business issue than to get their head straight and get their energy right and lift themselves up to be on a live lunchtime show. They said, no, forget it. It's easier to not do it. 
because the loss is not felt. The loss of their time and energy right now is felt. I have to, I have to give up my 20 minutes and my time staring out the window with a cup of coffee, thinking about whatever. I have to give that up. I feel that loss right now for some unknown benefit because I'm speaking into the ether and I don't know how many leads I'm going to get out of this. I don't know who's going to hear it. So my loss is in my mind greater than whatever I was hoping to gain from it. In that moment of low energy, indecision, the urgent seeming more important than the important because I didn't know what I was trying to achieve in this last quarter. And if it was to improve my ubiquity score, to get more leads, to be seen and heard, that was more important than dealing with employee issue number one. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm harsh about it because it's, it also hits on something else that we've talked about. If you haven't watched the episode we did, I think it was called, uh, can you achieve serenity in your business? Something like that. Go on our channel and watch it. It talked about, Sean talked about, um, the four D's as a filter. And um, we're not going to go into that here because go back and watch it. And we've gone in, in depth on that, but it's, it's one of those things. It's like, that's definitely golden line time, right? It, it's yeah. above the golden line. You as the CEO, the founder, the owner of the business, you and only you can go on those shows. So you're saying, you know, I'm going to forego that to go handle a problem that probably was below the golden line, or it may not have even been a problem. It just could have been something else that was, like you said, more comfortable or easier to go do because you do have to shift your mindset and you have to put your CEO hat on to go present your company in that way and yourself. So yeah, I'm harsh on it, but it's just because I've seen over and over and over how people poorly manage their calendars. And if you continue to do that, your business won't change next year. You won't change next year because you're operating the same way. So it doesn't matter what your goals are and your plan to achieve them. If you continue to show up the same way and you don't actually change, nothing will change. Yeah, there's, uh, wow, like four points I want to make. I'll try to come out of my mouth at the same time. Uh, one, I think we've done a disservice in some ways to leaders by not fully explaining what servant lead leadership means. In that, I think people are saying, "Well, we're all we're all equal here. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not going to elevate myself. We're all equal here." But your time is not equal. It's not. And if you should be getting five hundred dollars an hour in consulting fees and you're spending an hour jerking around with some PowerPoint that somebody on your team could clearly do for you. You're losing, you're losing money. You're costing yourself money because you're thinking, well, I'll just do it myself or whatever you're thinking, right? We have to go through all the, we, we unpack that when we went through the four D's and that's of getting people into the mindset of serenity, but that, that is them not valuing their time or being scared of doing something that is new or uncomfortable. And so they're just going to stay in their comfort zone or, or, or they just don't understand that value exchange. And yeah, that is, uh, that will kill you. I stand yeah. behind that. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. The one thing you you need to change in your business starting January 1st is you. It's the way you do business. That's my argument for today's episode. And the first way and fastest way you can change that is the foundation of your business. Like I said, whatif.com slash chaos. It is a free three-day workshop. Yes, we have a VI upgrade for a stupid, ridiculous low price of $47. But nice. we want you there. We want you to participate and we want you to actually build a foundation. You can change your business and grow your business on because on the other side of that comes everything we're talking about and hinting at today, which is the plan, the operation manual, and the methods and tactics and all that other fun stuff that you know you love talking about it. Don't do it without this. That's my argument. You won't grow. You won't change because you have the current operating manual of staying the same. So yeah, that's enough on that. Um, Sean, we're going to dive into the inner circle soon. Any last words before we wrap this up and go over there and really dive into people's business? Simplest thing to do is take the eight minute assessment to see where your business is. And then you'll have the architecture that we're talking about, the framework and a roadmap to get there. You would need nothing else in front of you to understand how to plan to, to accelerate the growth of your business with less time and energy. 
you will work smarter instead of harder. You will do the 20% that's going to give you the maximum lift, the, the 80% of the results, right? You're going to do less and achieve more in less time. This is the flux capacitor. This is what makes time travel possible. <laughs> it takes eight minutes to take. I don't know why you would do anything without that because it takes so much of the guesswork and lift, heavy lifting and, and the what the heck are these guys talking about? How could it be this easy? How could I work on my business now and have fun doing it and feel the ease and joy and serenity and uplifting feels and all of those things and have more success? How? how? It seems too much. Taking an eight minute test and then tell us if we're wrong. Eight minutes, but I'm too busy. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm, Go I'm take it. that to work out <laughs> so I'll never be in shape. Yep. Yep. And that is what you were busy saying, my entrepreneurial friends. Busy. Yep. So here's the secret. And we're going to sign off for today. We're going to hop on over to the inner circle. If you take this and you spend eight minutes, the report you get will detail for you the path to growing your business. Then if you go and register for this, we will build the foundation so that all of this makes complete sense. You can do this 100% for free. You never have to talk to another human being like us two weirdos. You can do this on your own. This is not some giant sales tactic. What we're saying is we want you to do it the right way because we see so many people struggle and the small business failure rates are astronomical in this country and in the world, and we want to fix that. So take our advice, do all of this for free, do all of it without talking to us or another human being. Go have a successful, beautiful business you could be proud of. But until then, we'll see you next week on the Inner Circle Preview Show next Wednesday, same time, same place. We have too much fun here, so we hope we'll, you will join us again. We'll see you next time. Hey, and if, you, if it makes you feel better, send us money. I mean, some you people do that don't too. like stuff when it's free, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you know <laughs> hey would you feel it's worth it? <laughs> bye get us out of here then we'll see you next time <laughs>